Item number 5699 Level 2 Restricted Containment Class Esoteric Secondary Class Cernonos Disruption Class Eki Risk Class Notice Special Containment Procedures As proper, complete containment of SCP-5699 requires the use of mass incarceration of affected individuals, lockdowns in major metropolitan areas, and extensive application of Class A amnestics. Containment of SCP-5699 has been indefinitely suspended. As SCP-5699 typically affects individuals experiencing trauma and emotional instability, containment specialists assigned to SCP-5699 have noted that witnesses regard SCP-5699 as a hallucinogen or an extended period of delirium. As such, the O5 Council have ruled that SCP-5699 does not require active containment. Description. SCP-5699 is a white-class spectral anomaly or group of entities resembling a hooded figure with a mirrored, reflective glass pane in the place of a head. Designates a spectral anomaly that possesses helpful or benevolent characteristics. SCP-5699 presents itself towards individuals experiencing significant emotional turmoil, with an increased appearance rate if an individual is either considering or attempting suicide. Upon arrival to a compromised individual, SCP-5699 will silently observe a subject for approximately five minutes' time and then vanish. After SCP-5699's disappearance, a message written in a fog of a mirror or other reflective surface within the vicinity of the subject will manifest. Messages written typically showcase affection or a positive experience in the subject's life. A brief showing of collected messages is transcribed below. You held my hand as I said goodbye to her and walked me home, shielding my eyes from the new mothers. You stayed with me. You hadn't even thought of leaving me. The little old lady in the hospital who sat at the windowsill, screaming at nothing outside, was comforted by your hand. It wasn't her granddaughters who hadn't been there, both in hospital and in life, but you did. You stood by her, gently holding her hand. You bought me a dress and helped me with the straps. You told me I was pretty and loved, and that the girl who had been inside of me the whole time was finally freed. The tea was cold, too much sugar and cream. The tea bag was split in half, leaving a mug with tea leaves at the bottom. Half of it was spilt on the bed, but you brought it for me when I was sick and shivering. You told me that you believed me. The haggard man who would lie by the garbage bags piled near the pub, who would rest and sleep by a brick wall, was fed by you. Of course you didn't cook anything, but you bought the suit with your own pocket money. You gave me your beloved dolly. Prom was less lonely with you. You hugged me when nobody would. You didn't know that it wasn't contagious, only through blood, and even if, you would have still shown me kindness. The birdies in the park were well fed after a long winter. You held my hand and fanned my cheek as the monitor dipped and swooned. You gripped my hand holding onto my wedding ring as the beep grew loud, and would gently stroke my arm as the beeps grew silent. Addendum number 1 The following message was discovered on Dr. Ronald Parrison's bathroom mirror. You let me be free from the cell. You let me wander in love. You helped me. You did everything that your name and place would balk, so I will be free and help others be free in their own way. I won't forget you. You are loved by me, don't forget that.